Okay, uh, it's 6.30, now call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with the pledge and then we'll by the silence. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start this evening uh, with presentation uh, for the Safe Sports Awards. We have Mr. John Alley and Christina Hughes to the presentation. Can I present from here or do you want me to come? I don't know where to present but <laughs> front and center, really. <laughs> Thank you. Right front, that makes it right front of Oscar. Okay. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Brad Rogers is the director of rehab at the hospital and he's my direct supervisor and John Alley is our hospital CEO. So I appreciate them both coming. We're here for moral support to yes. Christina and Rochester. Great job. So um, I'm excited to announce that the National Athletic Trainers Association has presented us with the first team Safe Sports School Award. So this was about a two-year process working with our safety committee, which includes all the administrators from buildings, the school, nurse, the school nurses, the maintenance staff, um, that whole group of people to make sure that we have these 10 things in place. So those kind of give you the 10 main categories. And this includes everything from making sure we have an athletic trainer on staff to making sure that we've done an annual rehearsal of our emergency plans, that we have the defibrillators are being checked, that the fields are being maintained, all those things. So by achieving all of these things, really we're providing the safest possible environment for our athletes to compete. So it's a big, big deal and congratulations to the school and hospital for getting all these things done. And I, I wanna personally thank everybody. This is just an indicator of the great people that I'm surrounded by. Um, Mr. Alley and I were just speaking back in the back corner about how terrific you are, and I shared that not only for our students, but, but personally, um, you helped out during a summer that was very trying for our family, but John, I think, hit, hit the nail on the head when he shared when, when we put differences aside of who, who's supposed to be responsible for the batteries or who's gonna take this on and just know that we're doing it for the students. Everybody can come together for the community. So thank you all for your support and your help and bringing this to fruition and, and just surrounding our students by the best. So um, we'll have the banner to display and I think ultimately it's gonna end up in the gym. We're gonna try to get it on the football field for this Friday night and then this logo, the Safe Sports School Award logo, we're now allowed to use that on our website and our letterhead and it's on my email signature and all those things. So this is a three year award and we'll reapply in 2019. Thank you for your so, hard work. Yeah. Especially yes, for thank you. Thank you. Good to know safety is a priority for our students. Thank you very much. And Mr. Allen said he has a board meeting tomorrow, so I gave him permission to leave. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Along with tomorrow, maybe enough. Yeah. Did you gentlemen have anything you would like yeah. to add? Or something? No, I mean, Christina really spearheaded the whole thing, working with Mr. Health and, and now our new athletic director um, here as well. And they just worked really hard for the last three years, making sure that they organize everything, make sure that we all show up when we need to, to make sure that we're uh, doing the walkthroughs together and anything that we needed or that she's needed. She's uh, kept us really up on everything, so we're just really happy that she's with the schools working as a representative for Woodlawn. Jim, thank you as well for your hard work and all of that. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move to consent items. Uh, the minutes of the July 25th regular board meeting, certification of the July 25th executive session, and minutes of the August 10th study session. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, I'll need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Jenny, second by Sandy. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Uh, 
approval of claims. Well. So tonight we've um, on the docket is approval of claim number 9,833 to 10,003 uh, totals $894,933.94. Uh, we did find um, a correction that needed to be made this afternoon. One of our defenders is new, and the name that was put in needed to be corrected. Um, and in your docket, it's in as innovation modular solutions, but it should actually be innovative modular solutions. It's the uh, um, rental due for the new um, temporary unit that's at Columbia. So my apologies for that. It'll get corrected. Um, it will be correct on the check when it does go out, but on the claim docket, it was um, it's listed incorrectly. But um, outside of that, yeah, we've got eight hundred ninety-four thousand nine hundred and thirty-three dollars and ninety-four cents on claims. Payrolls totaled. Um, let's see, on August fifth, it was three hundred and nine thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollars and seventy-four cents. And on August nineteenth, which is the first payroll of the seventeen, I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself, sixteen seventeen school year. Um, is three hundred fifty-one thousand eight hundred sixty-two dollars and thirteen cents. Fund reports. Aaron. On the general fund, we started with two hundred ninety-three thousand five hundred nineteen dollars and sixty-five cents. We had $983,024.58 worth of receipts. Uh, month to date expenses totaled $871,686.58 and our ending cash balance is $404,857.65 to general fund. Debt service we started with $1,737,774.55. Uh, we had $8,663.44 worth of receipts. And no expenditures for July, um, leaving us an ending balance of $1,746,437.99. Uh, capital projects, we started with $1,283,165.78. We had $4,549.01 worth of receipts. Uh, expenses for the month were $100,770.92, leaving us an ending cash balance of $1,186,943.87. Transportation fund, we started with $1,094,340.13. We had $2,706.39 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $20,733.80 leaving us an ending cash balance of $1,076,312.77. Last but not least, on bus replacement, we started with $346,434.78, uh, $536.73 worth of receipts. Um, no expenses. We've got a couple buses that are uh, coming, so we're expecting that anytime now. Um, so any cash balance was three hundred and forty-six thousand nine hundred and seventy-one dollars and fifty-one cents. Any questions on the fund reports that I just ran through for you? Val, I know that usually in the fund reports, the self-insurance fund isn't listed there. Exactly. We're just discussing that, and I noticed in the um, claim socket that there had been some movement to move over. So has that? Uh, roughly, do you remember, is that coming out about even right now, or are um, gaining in that? It's it's on a month-by-month -month basis. Um, as we begin the new plan year, we're definitely um, being more mindful of that. A new process that we're going to be transitioning to, or uh, not a new process, but a, a process to be more mindful of our um, is, is, is definitely watching that and being more proactive um, when it comes to um, needs and things like that. So uh, when it comes to you know general fund, the corporation will have a um, per plan contribution and then monitoring as the need, um, or, you know, as, as claims come in because we are a self-insured fund. Um, uh, it is it is definitely something to be more mindful of. Every one, um, everyone's actions to be a, a, a um, the, the smartest consumer and, and mindful of how those costs come in, it does affect the corporation and it 
um, and, it, and it does. Um, it, it's it's really simple how everyone can play. You know, can be an impact on on something you know as simple and com but yet complex as health insurance. So um, just really you know watching as we move forward with that. It's uh, we would like to see it grow to a more healthy um, point where it's not a cost concern at the end of the day. And I want to give Clint Gard. Um, credit. We have really started opening up communications with our CTA and trying to explain even with the administrative team and with the teachers what it truly means to be self-funded. Mm -hmm. um, that once those deductibles are hit, it's Rochester Community Schools that picks up the remainder of those balances up to um, X amount of dollars at 70,000 individual stock gap loss and, and then more for the district. But it's just that open communication and I believe that our CTA is really starting to grasp and the teachers are really starting to understand what that means and to be more mindful of it, as are we. Um, it's really difficult to budget and plan for because God forbid you don't know what those are expenses are going to be but when, when they do come through we need to make sure that we are growing that line item and so we are intentionally trying to do that in good faith. So is that a separate fund or it's a line item in the general fund? It's a separate fund. Okay. That might be helpful too to add to the fund. I appreciate the information you have in those fund reports. That one, that keeps it um, direct. So. <coughs> From there, I can hop over to the budget presentation. I'm not sure if we wanted to do uh, to approve these pieces first we, uh, or do it all at once. We'll just approve the, the financial, then we'll do the budget. Sounds good. That work. Any other questions on the financial report? If not, I need a motion to approve financial report. So approved. I'll second. Okay, motion by Brad, second by Lisa. Any discussion? On favor? Okay, motion to Okay, we'll move on to the presentation of the 2017 budget. It's coming up on you uh, behind your screen there. <coughs> Love to. So, um, I'm going to kind of take a step back into last year. There's a lot of changes that came down through the pipe through the 2016 legislative session. Um, Indiana Code 6-1.1-17-3 uh, um, allows um, uh, governmental entities to publish our Form 3, which is the official budget notice through the Gateway website. Um, well combined, it'll, um, it'll help save some of those advertising costs and, um, and, and make things more transparent for taxpayers as well. However, the bus replacement and the capital projects fund plan um, those are still going to be um, advertised through both the Rochester Sentinel and the Weekly Shopper as well. Um, more updates for this year um, was another uh, transparency piece. The goal was to provide schools, cities, and towns with more information um, in a more timely manner. And this is just a wrap year one of it, year two for the next year for our 2018 budget session or you know budget presentation is anticipated to um, be more of a detailed version of this year. This year we um, received our assessed valuations um, literally a couple days ago. Um, for next year the goal is to have that um, established by June 30th um, and have that out to all the units uh, first thing in July, which is when all, especially schools, are, are definitely working budgets, but when a lot of that um, preparation work takes place for units. Um, like I said, we've always already received our maximum levy budget for 17, um, and we can proactively prepare, you know, where necessary, even a lot sooner in the game. You know, if, if um, the assessed valuation, you know, drops tremendously, then we can start to do some of that proactive work um, during the last six months of the prior year versus, you know, 12 months of the of in, ensuing year. You can go ahead, Scott. So. Budget calendar, uh, what the goal is, is August 31st, which is uh, not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday, the notice of public hearing uh, will appear in Gateway and then bus replacement and CPF plans will appear in Rochester Sentinel and the Weekly Shopper. On September 19th, we'll have a public hearing. Um, October 24th um, is, um, is the goal to have the budget adoption. The um, deadline to have our budget adopted and approved is November 1st. Um, so we're way ahead of schedule, you know, on schedule, I shouldn't say way ahead, but we're pretty good schedule on there for October 24th for our adoption. And then November 2nd um, is when the CPF plan adoption will appear in the Sentinel and the Weekly Shopper. 
So here's a recap of the last four years of urine balances for each of the four, I should say, five funds. Um, um, in, in over the years, it's you know, you know, kind of grown, dropped a little bit, and then it looks like we, um, you know, kind of flattened off as a, on a on a total as a whole um, from 14 to 15. You can go ahead, Scott. Um, so 16 um, budget review. Let's see. We this is just looking at um, we went through the budget process last year. Um, you know, this time last year we were working 16th budget, and then in about January of 16 we had our budget. Um, our, we received our 1782, which is the formal uh, piece of our budget of, of this is how much allocations we can spend, this is how much we're going to get in tax levies, and this is so this is pretty much how it struck out after we advertised doing the same piece we're doing right now. So in debt service, we advertised a little over three million. We pretty much um, <laughs> difference of five hundred eighty-five dollars on that side. CPF we advertised one one six. Uh, we got one four. Transportation we received seven hundred sixty-four thousand. We received seven thirty. Um, so they, you know overall, and, and the same with bus replacement, we, we, did, we were down fourteen thousand in bus replacement too. But overall, it's this is um, this is pretty much what DLGF you know like what the goal even as um, all the taxing units. What the goal is is to have all of that assessed valuation information early enough so that we can have you know you know advertise as accurate budgets as we as we can. So um, go to the next slide from there. So moving into 2017, uh, rainy day. This is a formality. You have to advertise that um, that you're going to spend it to receive the appropriations, which is your permission to spend. So not that I look to you know need to, you know, or, or receive the need to dip into those rainy day funds, we, we do have to advertise and, and go through that process to get those permissions. So currently right now we have $119,417.78 in our rainy day. Um, beginning balance, and, and here's a yearly snapshot review. So we started with 70000 we got 48000 um, in from the state that said that we had to uh, apply that to our rainy day fund. We've not re expended it, of course, and so that's our end balance. So, um, and then rainy day projected revenues. Again, you know, this is how much we're. If we're looking, if we're anticipating receiving more money, then we would um, want permission to spend more money. But at this time, we're not um, anticipating putting any money into the rainy day due to our self-insurance fund balance needs. So history of general fund state tuition support. This was another interesting piece as well. Just the difference in the funding formula and enrollment of our students and things like that. Um, our estimated ADM right now um, that was submitted to the state back in May um, was 1,790, um, which is even uh, an increase of 87,000 over prior years. So that's a good move in the right direction. Um, we'll have to wait and see how the September enrollment comes out to be for the final. That count day is on, on September 16th. So any more students that enroll in before the 16th would definitely um, help out our district. So projected revenues are coming in at $15,210,630. At this point, basic grant, we get summer school funding and we get a lot of other funding as well. And those are those tools that will get advertised through the gateway on the, for the budget site. And then from there, um, this is a grouping. Um, what I've sent to you in your, um, through the board doc site is a detailed line by line by line. This is a grouping of six, it starts with 1100. That's all of our um, kindergarten, elementary, um, salaries and benefits and expenses from there. The 1200 is middle school, 1300. Um, I'm sorry, 1200 is specialized focus, but the 1100, my bad, um, my apologies on that one. 1100 is actually, it should be 11,000, I should say, is elementary, middle school, high school, salaries and benefits and materials and supplies and everything else that goes into that. 12,000 is specialized focus education, 13,000 adult basic, and then from there it just goes down the, um, the gambit through all of those other programs. Go on to the next page, Scott. There's even more. 
um, where you know office superintendent, the principal salaries, um, maintenance of buildings and grounds, and athletic coaches salaries and benefits. So that all comes to about fifteen million three hundred thirty one thousand two hundred seventy dollars that is uh, going to be advertised in our budget for those meetings. Uh, a couple more finalizing pieces um, that were that just wrapped up our open enrollment. Um, that's definitely uh, for our health insurance is uh, definitely a part that affects general fund. Um, and then we do have a few more certified teacher positions to fill. Um, a piece that is interesting as well is to keep in mind when you're budgeting for a calendar year for um, a school that doesn't, you know, of course schools don't operate on calendar years. And of course school finance funding does not operate on calendar years either. It's on a fiscal cycle. So we do have 10 payrolls uh, to wrap up for 16 and then 16 payrolls in 17. Um, so those, there's even 10 more payrolls in 17 that, um, that, that are accounted for as well in 17. So that's you know, definitely something to be mindful of. Debt service, um, pretty much our revenues are, are pretty cut and dry. We get 99% um, through tax levies, or I should say 100%, but um, between property taxes and then um, other income from there that is other I should say PTRC, which is property tax replacement credit. So um, three million three hundred eighty-nine thousand four hundred eighty-nine dollars. And then we have a breakdown of all of our um, principles and loans, and all of our um, our bonds, and and pretty much all of our debt in a nutshell. So that total three million four hundred thirty-one thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars. Capital projects fund. Uh, we get, of course quite a bit in, in tax levies and there's even other revenue that still comes in um, outside of the capital projects fund. So that's anticipated to be one million seven hundred and twenty seven dollars, I'm sorry, one million seven hundred and twenty seven thousand two hundred and sixty dollars for capital projects fund revenue. And what I did as well, I, I took the line by line detail and summarized it through uh, the groupings that they're located within and um, to uh, reflect our total allocations of 1,900,000 for expenditures. Sports, oh, sorry, back up real quick. Sorry. Sports facility does um, have 50,000 in there. Per statute, we can't spend a percentage of our capital projects funds on sports facilities improvements. So that allocation is accounted for. That's just more of an FYI. Technology also plays a big part as well as um, maintenance and buildings for our capital projects funds just keeping um, Keeping things running. Transportation funds, um, of course, again, um, quite a bit for through tax levies and then property tax replacement credits, and um, and there's another line in there as well through funding through other outlets and uh, revenue sources. Projected projected expenditures um, are grouped again, just a summary page of uh, those allocations. Um, transportation administration that includes not only our uh, transportation director but also his secretary uh, vehicle operation our bus drivers and uh, vehicle surface in servicing and maintenance um, includes getting our buses fixed and filling them up and keeping them on the road with tires and such and then of course insurance for the buses our students and other um, transportation services such as the software they use to uh, the transportation department uses to make sure that all the kiddos are picked up uh, per the routes. Bus replacement fund, it's pretty self-explanatory. We get uh, money to buy more buses and um, uh, replace buses as they grow old and weary with lots of mileage. And we get tax levies and property tax, property tax replacement credits as well. Anticipated two hundred sixty-eight thousand eighteen dollars from there, um, and then in on the flip side of it for expenditures, we're anticipating three hundred sixty thousand. Now, if you notice on this one, there's more expenses than there are revenues anticipated. That's because we've got a cash balance that we're anticipating. Um, we've got about a little over three hundred thousand worth of balance right now, and our losses are coming in about at about two sixty. So. Uh, we'll have a cash balance to bring in and that, that will help offset the difference. Yeah. So from there, then here's another recap again of you know where we were, where we're coming in at and things like that. So 
next steps for the budget process. So today, uh, what I'm looking for is to the approval on to um, advertise our 2017 budget, and then from there, that will get uploaded into the Gateway site and be viewable next Wednesday on the 31st. Um, the bus replacement and CPF plan will be available for view through uh, the Sentinel and the Shopper. And then, uh -huh. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we were, we were good. We were on it, Scott. Thank you. Um, and then from there, um, again, in September, we'll have our public hearing, and then at the October <coughs> board meeting, we'll uh, look to adopt and move forward. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you for grouping those expenditures. <laughs> that is so helpful to see that. I like the detail there too, but it is nice to see that grouping. It's, it's a lot to look at on the detail. So. Well, and I think that's very user friendly then for anybody else who has exactly. any questions or wants to see. It means a little more things. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Any other yeah. questions? Okay, so we'll need to uh, have a motion to approve the uh, starting process of adopting the, the pres budget presentation here tonight. Okay, motion Jenny. I'll second. Second by Lisa. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries. Okay. <coughs> now we'll move on to uh, donations. We have the Fulton County Solid Waste District, the Riddle, 2015-16 uh, recycling, $300. Fulton County Chamber of Commerce, uh, RHS Band, participation in the Bicentennial Parade, $150. Sally by the Shore Athletic Department, sales from the RHS Fall Sports Preview Night, $70.50. Fulton County Pack a Backpack. Um, Columbia, extra school supplies donated. Folders, paper, glue, crayons, pencils, eraser, uh, pocket Kleenex. Tim and Candy Hayes, <clears throat> RMS Letter Lounge, um, Gumball Machine and Foosball Table. Sue Cash, RMS PBIS Store, Diamond Earrings. Brenda Downs, RMS Student Needs, Miscellaneous Clothing Items. Booster Club, uh, the Athletic Department, Rochester Middle School Volleyball Uniforms, $1,025. Rex Reinhold, Athletic Department, Shootout Gun for Basketball Teams, $3,300. <coughs> Boys Jet Basketball Boosters, Athletic Department, Shootout Gun for Basketball Teams, $150. And uh, Stephanie Barkman, RHS Library, Memory K. Gosher for purchase of books, $15. Uh, Jola Gossert, RHS Library, in memory of Kay Gossert for purchase of books, $15. Polk <clears throat> County Soccer Association Athletics, Soccer Goals, $700. And uh, Rochester Boys Soccer Athletics, Soccer Goals, $495. Are there any additions? Not that I'm aware of. Can we need a motion to approve the donations? I move we accept those donations as listed. Okay, motion by Lisa. Second by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor? The okay, motion carries 7 0. And once again, I'd like to thank all the, the donors uh, and everything else. God bless you, it only is imagined, and rightfully so, that that list would get smaller and smaller, but in fact it does, and it continues to grow and maintain, and it's just a testament to our community. Okay, thank you. Moving on to information analysis, uh, approval to purchase or trade grasshopper mower with a uh, 72-inch deck. Bill, do you have additional information? I don't. I don't. Um, I'm looking to trade in our current deck um, for a new one. Um, um, we're getting a $3,000 allowance on our current one to apply towards the purchase of the new one. Oh, it's a little hard out. Brian, Brian Stockberger just came to me and shared that they're continually, it just gets to a point where you have so many hours on the mower that, that those expenses are, are continuing. The, the cost to maintain and to fix it is more than 
than what should be necessary and it's just time for that trade-in we did talk about whether or not we felt like I know later in our board um, agenda we have items that we would like to try to option off or, or sell and uh, the group consensus was we would get more in a trade-in value than we would trying to auction that off and Rochester Ford New Holland has always been more than fair with us in regards to helping us out in that manner any questions this is more just a procedural question I'm curious what made this rise to the level for board approval because it's like thirteen thousand dollars or something mm -hmm. the sell of the equipment do I mean I guess lesson for myself to every time we sell or trade in our school equipment do we need that board approval depends on whether it's a budget that I have or not if it's in the budget then then the board's already approved it if it's uh, a separate item and the board can still be aware of it. Thank you. And that wasn't originally in the budget. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we'll need a, if there aren't any more questions of you know, approval to purchase and trade in the old lawnmower. So we Okay. Second. Second by Don. Any other questions? All in favor? Okay, most carry the Okay, approval to purchase a 3D printer for the Rochester High School program. Uh, Joel Lowell is here. If you could give us a little info on that. Um, we're, uh, <coughs> the engineering department uses the 3D printer wrap prototype machine. Um, you know, almost beyond daily, every class period uses it. Our current model has 3,256 hours on it. Um, when I called to get quotes on it, they couldn't believe that we've had that many hours on it, to be honest with you, and it's still running. Um, most of the school corporations that they sell to have somewhere between um, 750,000 hours on it. Our machine is currently nine years old. Uh, it's just like a computer, you know, just using a computer for nine years. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's been a good machine, but it's, it's time to upgrade it and move on. Uh, that one currently will go to the middle school. They do not have the demand that we do. Um, it's just like anything else. You know, we're all trying to compete for students across the area, and I, I feel like that's kind of the backbone in the engineering department is the rapid project machine. About Craig and Ken we would have the money in repair and replace exactly. for, for this item. So which fund is it? Repair and replace. Okay. From the capital projects repair and replace, or is there a whole it, other? It's, it, it, it's its whole other repair and replace fund. So I think about it. <laughs> uh, a few years ago, um, there were uh, funds established for this repair and replace fund. Um, there was a resolution to um, enact this repair and replace fund, and that is what for, for this type of purchase is what it is um, to be used for the funds. In this. Thank you. Yes. So before it's in repair or replace, where does this come from? The general fund to go. I in? wasn't able to identify that as much. It doesn't as go there every year. It's just there now. Oh, no, it's it's always there. It was established. Um, I can't. I through the time that I've had with it in, in making myself acquainted with this fund as to where the funds came from, I've not identified that piece yet. But I have identified that that it is the funds in this. The money in this fund is to be has been established for repair and replacement of equipment. How much is in there? <laughs> I just left. <laughs> so, there was, there was all those lines of the budget. That I've done since then, so, but I, I will I will give you that information. It's 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 a it's it's a healthy amount, but not super. We <laughs> like healthy amounts. <laughs> so this won't deplete the fund. Exactly. No. Joel, what kind of projects do you do with this? Um, you know, I, I don't know if anybody tells you. You understand what a 3D printer is. Everybody familiar with that is. Okay. Um, so we start out with freshman class, and they do small projects, um, a lot of tensile testing, things in their, uh, that they create in their AutoCAD. Um, all the way up to their senior year, where they will actually build and go through a patent process of a prototype you know, if you ever been through the patent process, that, that's where you use those examples to actually build it. I thought there was a new patent, but um, I, I wish I could give you specific examples. We've used it through the first revives, we make gear bearings, um, I've made, we made spatula heads, we made 
um, gas can spouts. Um, I'm just trying to think of ten thousand. I mean, we use it, like I said, we use it all day, every day. It's hard to create. Kids all have different ideas. I mean, every kid has a different idea what their answer should be. Can we come in and watch you make something? <laughs> Absolutely, trying right now. Sweet. <laughs> this is a plastic. It makes it perfect. It is ABS plastic. plastic. Uh, I sent you. I wish I could do a better job, but Stratus has figured out that they can make more money by eliminating the competition. And so you guys have those three bids in there. So I called trying to get three bids. There's only one company in the state in yet that can sell Stratus uh, prototype machines. The problem with you can buy a, a twelve hundred dollar prototype machine, but it's kind of like buying you know a BB gun, you know, at a, a department store. It lasts about a day. So you want to buy something that's going to last 10 years. This is what this one's lasted. Uh, when we bought this under Dan Rock, we knew life, shelf life almost going to be 10 years. Yeah. Um, you said that the operator would be able to sell this object 30, which is the one that you recommend, yes. has a two year warranty. So I assume that the one year partner in Emerald Care and the one year, and plus the one year warranty, do not run concurrent. One picks up after the other one's done. That is correct. That's an educational package, just like these things working on a car. It is. Okay. Um, but they expect the machine last ten years, and they warranty for one. They run the. They run the deduct. There's no deductible on the second one, the way I understand it. Um, it's just a different company picks it up the second year. Um, what's what's the approximate cost of the resin that we use now on a yearly basis? Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. What's, what's the probable cost of resin for this new machine per year? Well, the advantage to the new machine is, and we have the new machine, you gotta understand how software works. Right now, when I build something, I say, all right, build. Whether I have three things, four things on it, okay, and a kid decides, you know what, that's wrong. <laughs> I'm like, crap, there's nothing I can do, it's gotta finish the build. The new machines, I can stop the build, I can delete that particular part, even if it's only halfway through, therefore I'm saving money because of that. Now the resin on the new machines is half the price. So if I'm spending, in theory, now hold me in theory in this, I don't know, I do not know if this machine, the newer machine as well as I know the old one. The old machine takes $260 per unit, if you will. The new machine takes $130 per unit, supposedly the same building material, 52 cubic inch per okay. block, if you will. Right. And I'm able to stop the new machine mid-build, pull stuff out, delete bills as tight as I need. Um, so the $6,000 resident credit should carry us through several years? I would suspect it will take us if you want my, without knowing yeah. what it is, I would say two years. That's that's generally what I've been spending. I spend about fourteen hundred dollars, yeah, every year is what I spend. So it should be less than, it, but this new In theory, is less. You gotta understand. I don't know what the startup costs. I don't know what the building. You know, I mean, what am I gonna shoot through? You're talking about a brand new, brand new machine that I don't know a lot about. Sure. But that's the sure. Sure. About switching companies. Can you, do you have any idea about how many students we have in our engineering programs? I do. I see uh, 142 a day. Great. That number could be higher if I was to myself. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Do you work on that? How about three? 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 Any questions? We'll need a motion to approve the purchase of the 3D printer as quoted. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Don. So Brad and uh, Don and Brad second. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Motion carried. Seven zero. Thanks again, Joel. Thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on to uh, sell tech items, weight room items, and uh, piano. 
we have included a list and I want to thank Greg and, and Scott for <coughs> providing this list to us it's in uh, um, items that we no longer use those that uh, Scott has listed in the technology area I would respectfully recommend that I work with Dan McCarthy we had an online auction a year or two ago and that seemed to go very very well and um, really helps with our maintenance staff before when you have those public auctions you have a lot of stuff left behind that we're still responsible for those silent auctions that are well advertised uh, we did really really well on the weight room stuff Greg correct me if I'm wrong I'm a little bit hesitant the responsibility of selling some of that weight room I'm wondering if we wouldn't get more just from scrapping it out the permission it seemed like a lot of it on the list was broken and not usable obsolete and unsafe so permission to, to scrap rather than sell and then Luke and uh, Wendy just shared that there's a piano at Riddle that they would like they have three um, pianos there one they are not utilizing and they felt comfortable um, selling one of those pianos as well I make a motion that we scrap out the weight room Weightlifting equipment. I looked at it as well, and I'm by no means an expert, but it's junk, and, it, and pr scrap prices are not that good. But at the same time, I think we would get less taking it through the process of a auction, and we'd be better off to do it through a scrap process. I should let you make the motion. It, you can make it also. I mean, I've seconded it now. So, um, do you want a separate one for the piano since we're going to sell it? But we would also be trying to sell all of the technology equipment on that list as well. So the top list of, with all of the technology, I would propose doing a silent <coughs> auction online the, just as Dan McCarthy oh, okay. and I did. Was that maybe two years ago when we did that? I think you know, that there, yeah. um, and try to sell this technology equipment. I'm proposing scrapping all of the weight room, uh, those areas from the athletic department, but also trying to do a silent auction on the piano. Okay, well, I amend my motion to sell everything on this list with exception of the weightlifting equipment, and that should be scrapped. And I'm going to defer again to Mr. Marks. It's his house. I don't mean to step on your toes by offering that opinion, so. No, I completely agree. Okay. Did you second the amendment? I second that okay. amended last thing he said. <laughs> okay, my motion by Don and second by Brad. Any other discussion? No favor? Okay, I'm just curious. Okay, moving on to uh, the approval of the Herman Getz uh, for the HVAC bid. I want to thank Terry Thornton. <coughs> he spent time with us prior to this board meeting um, sharing what those bids were and exactly what that means to, to the board, to the community, to our school district. And uh, he's going to recap some of that for us. Before you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I should have another. Here, here. I can give it to you. Okay. That's okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, as Miss said, I we went through this in detail, so I'm going to give this <coughs> version and. A couple folks were out, so just um, ask questions as needed. So back on August 9th, we received three bids for the mechanical replacement project for the high school. And um, those three contractors were Hagerman, Herman and Getz, and Wilhelm. Um, Wilhelm, uh, just to give you some background, Wilhelm was late coming into the game and um, they were contacting us, calling us, or their subcontractors were calling us uh, a week, week and a half ahead of time asking us what they were supposed to bid. So there wasn't much effort from the general contractor in helping them understand what they were doing. So I think that explains their bid a little bit in that uh, they didn't uh, know exactly what they were up against. Hagerman and Herman and Getz bids uh, all in all were $77,000 apart. So that's 1.8% spread, which is a really good spread for a project of this size. So that means uh, um, those two contractors included everything from our bid documents uh, with no concerns on our end that they missed something. Uh, in the end, Herman and Getz was low with a base bid of uh, 4.27 uh, 
uh, million, and then we'll go down this list and talk about alternates. The unit price numbers um, were just safety nets for us. If we had decided to do a couple more faucets or plumbing items, uh, we know what those unit costs are going to be. Um, alternate item A1 is, again, a safety net for us. We ask for the bid bond information from contractors, and that tells us whether or not we're at risk with that contractor. If their bid bond is really high, that means they're either spread too thin or they have insurance issues. So that helps us explain that number. And then alternate A2 is, um, <coughs> is actually uh, for the middle school chiller um, during the design. We decided to go ahead and design a separate um, chiller system for the middle school and separate from the high school. Currently the high school feeds the middle school under the parking lot, which uh, is a long distance and a long way. Um, unfortunately, I have no way to tell you how much loss you have in efficiency in that system, but it can't be great. Um, Jim Swank uh, uh, all along has, has told us how deep the pipes were buried when we redid the parking lot for the buses a couple years ago. We found out they're not so deep. So that tells me that that pipe probably gets a little hot. Um, and so we lose some of that cooling in the process of, of moving it all the way across the, the property. Um, alternate A3 is for controls for the newer part of the high school. Um, the newer part being 20 some years ago, but it's still the newer part. Um, so we wanted to be able to put the entire building on the same HVAC control system. So we wanted to, a number to, to add that part of the building. Alternate A4 is for a generator hookup. That is for the whole building. That's for a semi to basically bring a generator big enough to power the entire building in the event that the community loses power and you guys become a shelter for the community. So that is a, a separate number. Again, that came during the design. We decided to do that so we can itemize that cost. The building will have a small generator, an electrical generator for emergency lights and um, kitchen equipment, but that's for a couple hours. That's for a storm event in which the power comes back on, you don't lose any of those things and you have light to get out of the building. Alternate A5 is for duct cleaning. In the process of the design, uh, we did some inspecting on the, the duct work in the building originally to 1965, and so it has dirt from 1965 built up in it. We decided it's probably a good idea to get that cleaned out since we're redoing everything else in the system. Um, and then alternate A6 was uh, to put the uh, controls contractor in a competitive bid situation um, we want to match the uh, control system that's in this building as well as going into Columbia, um, but without sole sourcing that same control system just for the high school and allowing that contractor to bid whatever they want, we put them in competition with others. Um, that number we found out from Herman and Getz of the, uh, the 208,000 uh, was to basically leave the control system that's there in place, and that was not an option in our drawings thus not an option for their alternate. So uh, we're rejecting that one. So um, of those items, the big one is the middle school chiller and separating that system. Um, next summer, we've talked about this throughout the design process. We've talked about it in other meetings that we've had as a group. Um, next summer, the cooling in the high school is gonna be shut off. We're gonna lose it all summer long in order to do the renovation for the high school. In the process of doing that, if the middle school is not on its own system, it's also going to get shut off. We anticipated to move all activities out of the high school over to the middle school to allow summer activities to happen. Um, you would not have cooling there either if we continue to maintain the same system where they're not separated. If we decide to elect to, to choose this alternate, we actually could have this chiller work done at the middle school prior to next summer. Go ahead and have cooling in place so that before we hit the summer months, the, the, the middle school work's already finished and out of the way. And Terry, correct me if I'm wrong, you shared earlier in the study session that there would be some cost savings in regards to what we need, that needed to do at the high school in regards to unit size and correct. framing and those types of things. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so the, um, right now you have uh, a cooling tower that's on top of the high school that's near the mechanical room and then you have two ground mounted chillers. Um, we're gonna eliminate the two ground mounted chillers and put two chillers up on the high school in place of that cooling tower. If we decide to keep the middle school on the same system, those top, those <coughs> two chillers get even bigger and then the steel framing that's up there has to get bigger to hold it up. The building can hold it up, but the framing isn't big enough to hold those big units. So we designed to add more steel 
and uh, increase that frame so that we can put those bigger units up there. If we don't have to do that and put a separate, separate units over for the middle school, um, that'll reduce some of that cost. And that's what this number is in total. It's uh, moving some dollars from the high school, move it over to the middle school. And at the middle school, those two units, there's two units, they'd be uh, adjacent to the boiler room. So they're within feet instead of, I jokingly said a quarter mile earlier, I haven't, mm -hmm. I've measured it, it's a pretty long way under the parking lot to get over there. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna gain that efficiency in that system because we're no longer transporting cool wa chilled water under, underground um, that far distance. So um, that those units would be uh, back there where the, the small electrical generator or gas power generator is now, as well as the gas meter, but it's gonna be fenced in completely so it'll be hidden um, at least out of sight somewhat and, uh, and kind of tucked away. There's pine trees up there that help, help mask it and hide it. Um, and at that point, you no longer are dependent on the high school to cool the middle school. Um, and it's not only in the event that we lose the cooling, if you have a power outage at the high school, you lost cooling to the middle school in that process. So this separates the two. We talked about it in the study session earlier when the middle school was originally built. Um, it was a low budget project, obviously, because the building didn't have walls in it at, at, in the beginning. So it was probably that was the thought, what's the least expensive option to get cooling to that building? To run pipe. So um, we're trying to separate them completely so that the, the middle school becomes a standalone building. So here's my four, my $4.27 million question. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have two bigger chillers at the high school replace the ones that aren't as big or as efficient now. Is that what you said? And I don't wanna put words in your mouth. Um, what we, and to give you a little background, we talked about it earlier. Um, currently, you have two ground-mounted units and you have a cooling tower. That one of those ground-mounted units actually isn't used very often at all. Um, not sure how it was engineered. Uh, Jim Swank informed me that one of those units is a backup when it's 90 degrees outside. We designed the new system only for the need for the building for the middle school and the high school separately instead of this extra uh, capacity. Um, they'll be totally separate, two units at the high school that are smaller and two smaller ones at the middle school. So here's my $4.27 million question. With the two ones at charitable capacity high school and a separate one at the middle school so we don't have to use the two from the high school, where our rooms on the second floor are finally going to be cool enough so our kids don't come to me at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and practice and say, Coach, yeah. it was 85 degrees. Uh, Is it going to fix that or not? I'll tell you what I told you. It's going to be a whole lot better than it ever was. I can't make I can't make complete promises, but right now the biggest issue in the high school, the control system's a, a wreck. Which is going to be fixed with this, though, right? It will be, and you'll actually have the capacity for the cooling. You go down in. You've been down in the in the bottom. A few of you have been down in the basement. I think Brad, potentially you were down there in the basement. Um, you could blow dry your hair down there. There's so much leakage in that system. We're going to fix all those things and come in conjunction with those units in conjunction, I mean, all in all controls. Um, I know, Jerry, and I believe it. Yeah. I'm just saying, I've got kids and parents going to say, why is it so Hey, tell me yep. to fix that, I'm okay. Yep. I mean, you can tell me about blowing down below and tunnels. Doing the best we can, but right. yeah, I, I can, it, we should be able to get control of the building to where you'll have cooling on the second floor at a, so that every room is consistent. That's the plan, instead of an 80 degree room and a 60 degree room and a, it's the controls, they're, they're a mess, as well as all the inefficiencies in the system otherwise. Um, I can't make complete promises, but you've asked me to promise, and I, the best I can do is, it's gonna be 10 times better than it is now, is there's so many things wrong with it. It's, 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 it's a big mountain to climb, and the $4.6 million should get it. Should get it. Yeah, should get it, get the issues resolved to where you have control of the next system. Year. Beginning, um, the, and at the bottom of that breakdown, that they have to be done by December of So we'll get a tool one way or another. If we install some alternate aid to the middle school, does that mean we can reduce the equipment installed in the high school? It will. It'll, we'll no longer have the two units on the ground that, that Jim has to maintain. We're taking the chain link fence down and actually uh, fixing that so that he can use that space. Um, we'll get rid of the cooling tower, which we talked about earlier. Cooling towers are high maintenance items. They have uh, chemical mixtures and other things in you. 
have to have everything working perfectly in order to, for it to operate properly. And unfortunately, um, it was the unit that's up there is actually from the early 90s, but it looks like a shipwreck. It has what we jokingly call barnacles growing off the side of it. Okay. So you're going to minimize the amount of maintenance and upkeep right. so overall. The permit gets uh, good here. And if we were to install a middle school, there would be a reduction somewhere in this column. This, that number includes everything as the trade-off. So that, um, that $367,000 um, accounts for the reductions at the high school and the additions at the middle school. It's all in. The way we wrote the alternate, I'd have to let you read it okay. to see how it's all inclusive. Okay, all right. I, I so the only additional savings would be inefficiencies, which of course we I can't, can't quantify, yeah. but, the, but the alternate already has that. Everything included. There's nothing. Trade off. Okay, this would take the functionality of the tunnel away. We wouldn't, the tunnel wouldn't mean a thing anymore, right? No, they're, they're, that's a, people think that there's a tunnel between the two schools and there's not a tunnel. The tunnels, the story of the tunnels, you actually have tunnels under a bunch of your buildings, but I'll keep it simple. There are tunnels under the high school that go, and I could show you in the drawings after the meeting, that go completely from end to end, and you can walk through them. Yeah. That, those tunnels are, where, that's the duct work under the building. It's blowing cold air through concrete block tunnels from one end to the other, and that's how they're kind of, nope. No, from so the so how they get cooling to the middle school is pipes in the ground. It's and it's just it's moving cold water from one one building to the next. So imagine just like in your house, you're up on the second floor of your house, you turn on the hot water in the basement, and you wait, and you wait. Well, it's the opposite. We're sending that cold water over to that other building and that, that ground's hot. And so you're you're taking that cold out of the water as it moves all the way across the parking lot. And so we're losing efficiency. We should see improved efficiency, and eventually we'll get new controls at the middle school as well one of these days. And but they don't have nearly the issues you do at the high school because of the second floor and the other things that Brad talked about. But no, I get it. I I was in a school building for another school system on Friday, and my whole team was. And um, it was over 85 degrees, and it's unbearable. It, I can't imagine how these kids learn anything if they're worried about sweating all over their work in front of them. So, Brad, I do have a question. I'm going to put Brad on the spot here and Skeeter on the spot here. We had a meeting around that alternate uh, A4, the generator hookup, when we were talking about wish list items and necessities to keep the buildings going in, in case of an emergency. And so my understanding is that this 62,800 would be the hookup system if we had a catastrophic loss and we had to bring in state units. And, and so my question to, to you gentlemen in law enforcement is if something were to happen in the community, I wanna make sure that we're able to support the community and whatever their needs are. Would we would we need that hookup, or if they were bringing in that equipment, would they have the means to set that up for our community? The way it happened out of Hurricane Sandy was at Atlantic Beach, which is a barrier island, and I give you a little bit of background here on Long Island. They brought in a huge generator, which we reallocated. My attorneys here, so I have to use those terms. And there were local people that could hook that up. For sixty-two thousand dollars, I can't sit here and represent the taxpayers and say we should spend sixty-two thousand dollars to make it easier on the federal government when we have a backup generator that can keep things cold and things like that. If FEMA were to bring a huge generator with a thousand-gallon diesel tank in, we could get a Duke or a RMC or somebody to come do that. And Terry, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen it happen, and we bill it to FEMA and say we did this for you. I can't see morally or ethically spending $62,000 to keep the federal government happy. No, that was my question and I know we had that, we did have a meeting on what we, the necessities we discussed and I, so we asked Terry to do that and, and I thank you Terry for bringing that number to us. It was kind of one of those that we wanted to see. I'm one voice, Terry, Skeeter, what, I mean, what do you guys think? I don't. Yeah, we discussed it earlier. I've, I've designed a lot of these systems so thank goodness never seen it used because we haven't had it. Uh, a catastrophic event um, 
my concern is that, as I mentioned earlier, is if if it's if if you have, let's just say you have a tornado come through Rochester, it only affects Rochester, fine. But if you have something affect three other communities and they all need that generator, who's getting it first? Probably who can hook it up the fastest. It's just it's it's just um, I think it, it is an extra. Um, but if you are the high school is the sole source of shelter for the community. I, it's nice to have it there. Now is a good time to do it, but um, we don't have to make a decision on it today. We could we could keep it in the project and, and, and try to do it later if the money's still there, or if the funding's not available from another source. Um, that was something we asked about too, Brent. Do you know like emergency management or other kinds of agencies that would be willing to pay for it? Now. And that's a good question. Skeeter of the Public Safety Committee with Mr. Oz would have to see if there's some kind of grant to say that. To pay for it now? You know how bureaucracy is. <laughs> I would they say most likely no, but I frankly don't know. Like I said, when we were out at Sandy, the generator was delivered at 9 o'clock at night. By 6 o'clock the next morning, we had the town hall and probably a couple other buildings wired ready to go. And I had nothing to do with the watch and say, they said, don't touch that. And I said, okay. <laughs> So I mean, with the expertise and the relationships we have with Duke and RMC, I feel very confident that they would be more than willing once they got their teams here to, to help us. And I can't see spending sixty-two thousand dollars to do that. So, Terry, you're comfortable while while we do some more research around this and asking those entities and safety committees to to leave that out with the initial proposal this evening. Agreed. Okay, you're in the generator that's still going to be on the building. We'll get you power for kitchen, some kitchen equipment and, and general lighting in the building. So you'd have to you'd buy you some time. Okay. Can I, I want to get Skeeter's opinion. I'm one voice. I'm not, I don't know everything. What do you think? I think as long as, I mean, when you call for that generator, you're going to ask if you have access first. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, you're not getting it. So I think if you have the access, it's great. Go with that. Like I said, it's a wish list. Um, one thing that I want to mention that I don't know if we, I know we covered in our meeting, um, one night, the gym went dark. You couldn't see out. Is that generator still going to be the same? I mean, we had. What did that happen? Yeah, our personal jet backup generator, I think, needs to be upgraded. I think we talked about that from a public safety standpoint, but we don't need a 5,000 kilowatt semi driven. In the last year? Yes. Okay. Last year. So that generator didn't come on. Is it going to be replaced or not? Do we know? The generator is getting replaced. Yes, the, it's an antique. But I think um, you had mentioned you went to auction it off. So we'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a Ford engine in it. So yeah. uh, Terry, pr prior to the meeting, I asked you if, if we didn't have this hooked up all ready to go, and a generator was brought, is there a way we could tie it to the building? You said no. So what? Not without somebody like Duke. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's not impossible. No. It's just no until a day or two. It's don't touch that. Right. Because you're talking about a lot, a lot of power. Yeah. But and also in New York, we had salt water to deal with. This is yeah. yeah. I knock on wood, probably much simpler. And so Skeeter says, if you call for the uh, generator, they have one, and you can't connect up right away. You don't get it, which right. means we don't have anything quickly that can be set up, which is more than our difficulty. I agree with Jennifer that that if our building would be for the county or the half the county then there ought to be some more revenue sources to help pay for for the connection that's i mean uh, when you look at how expensive it is compared to the rest it's not a lot but it would be a great benefit if it were ever needed agree uh talk about the gym lane well, back in the corner there the battery powered lights we don't have that in the gym that would get i have out. to look and see if they're these look like they have batteries because the size of them. Um, a lot of new ones we don't. We have them hooked on. Work there on the back of our circuit, so there's no battery in it because of maintenance. And those, and those, I'll have to look. They should have come on. And so we'll have to find out what's going on. I feel confident. We'll look that into it. We ask for I, I can't explain it. No, we can suggest we figure out what what we have on. So, yeah, you should imagine how dark it would be in there. That's gonna be a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said big scare or something too. Does anybody have additional questions for Terry? No. Terry, just real quick, we mentioned earlier that um, we, 
in years past there have been issues when the um, heating and cooling had not been on correctly and had, we lost equipment because of that but you have a plan in place or we won't have we won't have cooling over the summer but there will be dehumidifiers and stuff correct so um, I was here when this building was built and that summer um, actually that was the summer I think it was March or so, it was 85 degrees outside. So um, you start finishing drywall in here and it's too humid, things won't dry. So here, out in the main entries that you come in, both of them, they were industrial size. They looked like the size of a VW. They were dehumidifiers. Um, we would do the same thing in high school if needed, but it, again, I don't I don't put it in the basement because I don't want you to contract to put $100,000 in there for something we don't know if it's going to be needed or not. So instead, we'll use the contingency dollars. There's $185,000 in contingency in that bid. That'll protect us in the case that we either need a bunch of fans or just to be moving air around. It's going to be like Brad talked about how hot it is. Even with cooling on now, we we'll imagine not having anything. There's no windows to open. So it's simply open the doors and put fans in and then we'll dehumidify the space if we need to. This, and we'll have to talk about it, we still need to talk about the, the, the abatement part of this, but the ceiling's gonna be taken out of the middle hallway completely. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to be keeping air movement in there for the contractors. There shouldn't be any students. Hopefully we'll be able to keep teachers out for the most part so they're not coming into the building. But we'll either do fancy dehumidifiers uh, as needed throughout the space. That, looking at the drawings, we're sectioning off the building as we work through it to try to minimize disruptions. So, if I may, I'd like to make the recommendation to the board that we accept the bid by Herman and Getz, um, leaving out alternative A4 as a deduct at this point in time and accepting the remainder of the bids or remainder of the alternates as proposed. And also A1, A6, to be included, correct? A5. Yeah, A. You just went two, three, and five. Mm -hmm. Two, three, yes. Agreed. Yes. So your recommendation is to leave the generator hookup? No, take out the generator hookup. Is this a take out the generator hookup already in here? That is actually a D dub that'll come off of the 4.2. So if you accept a four, then you deduct the 62,000. Correct, you're accepting to deduct it. Yeah. So how do we want to phrase the motion then? Um, you want two, three, four, five. I move that we accept the Herman Getz bid with the alternates two, three, and five, with four still being on the table to, to reconsider at a later date. Is that one? If you leave it like that, then he tells the builder to plan for the generator hookup to be put in. If we accept the deduct, then there won't be a generator hookup, although later on, you can issue a change order and add it back in if you find another source of funding or something like that. So I believe, you, I think you want to accept. With two, three, and five? Yeah, and four. Seven, two, three, and four, and five. Because it's saying we're taking it away. Yes. Four, two, the four, original four. bid would give, would give you the generator hookup. Okay. And if you accept the alternate, it takes the hookup away. Is that so what, is that what you're understanding? Exactly right? We're not doing it. Correct, it's actually two, three, and four. Five, five states in there. Five is the duct cleaning. Yeah, yeah so that would, if you accept it, you're taking, taking it out. out. I'm, okay. Yes. I so see. you're accepting two, three, and four. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, I'm okay. not confused. Well, five. Five. Okay. We didn't so accept five. Yeah, I'll take it away. I move to oh. accept the bid with two, three, and four. Oh, yeah. we don't want these. You do want to clean the ducts, right? Right. Okay. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Right. If you want to clean the ducts, then you. Don't accept five. Right. Yeah. So I move that we accept this bid with alternates two, three, and four. I okay. second that. Okay, motion by Lisa and second by Steve. I'm still confused. I'm <laughs> still confused. I'm so correct. here's just so I understand. If we accept this, this with up. alternate two, <laughs> we're going to get the middle school children. Yes. We accept it with alternate number three, we're gonna get the controls in those units. Right. Yeah. 
we want to accept number four because it's going to take the generator hookup away. Right. And we decline alert at five because it's going to keep the duct cleaning in. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I had a straight line. That was a long road. Sorry. Oh, I, wait, I don't want to vote for something yeah, yeah. I'm not clear on what I'm voting exactly. on. Exactly. That's the yes, that's it. Is that correct? I'm trying. I try to think. I'm not very smart, so I got to keep the layman's going. Is that right? I think. I think we got it. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion by Lisa and a second. Steve, second. Any other questions? All in favor? That's the bill. Motion carried. Thanks again, Terry. You're Thank welcome. You Thank you. Uh, we still need to discuss the <laughs> asbestos piece, but <laughs> oh. uh, the good news was the overall bid, um, we were about $208,000 under budget. So we got good numbers, um, good competitive numbers between those two contractors. And then um, for the abatement piece of it, we got four bids, Alliance Environmental, which is your, um, your contractor that takes care of the environmental stuff. Uh, we gave them our drawings, they used our drawings to put together a package. They received four bids for abatement, um, and I think everyone has that handout. So uh, the low bid on that was EACI at $118,600. Um, and that includes, the abatement items include ceiling tile, it's actually the dust on top of the ceiling tile from uh, old insulation and things, um, fireproofing, that also has asbestos in it, floor tile, and mastic, um, and then ductwork and insulation items. So all of those things need to be abated as we move through the building for the new HVAC system. Um, this has been an ongoing thing in, in most of the buildings um, having to deal with abatement as we, as we work through renovation projects. So. Now's the time to do it, because you're gonna be working those areas. We have no option. <laughs> Okay, we'll need to uh, have a motion to approve uh, EA CIA as contractor at one hundred eighteen thousand six hundred dollars for uh, asbestos removal. And we're perfectly comfortable with this company. Uh, three out of four of those companies have done work here before, and they are one of them. So, okay. so we just Alliance Environmental, which is your uh, vendor for you have a contract with them. They oversee all of it. So they ensure things go smoothly, and then they also perform their testing as needed. Uh, okay. The I move that we approve the ACI at their bid for the asbestos removal. Okay, motion by Brad. A second. Second by Jimmy. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried, 7 0. Okay, thanks, Brad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Okay, next we have the appointment of uh, Lindsay Kozovic, Kozovic uh, Public Library Board Member. Um, any questions on this? I believe that's a reappointment. She's been on Okay, this for the Kiwana Union Township Public Library Board. I believe we'll be appoint with the Coast of Public Library Board member. Okay, motion by Don. A second. And a second by Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried 7 0. Okay, we need to personnel uh, report. We have for hiring, Minyi Wang, RHS Chinese teacher, Jenica Stippler, Riddle Special Education teacher, Becky Burke, RHS Physics and Integrated Chemistry and Physics teacher, uh, Annette Sass, Columbia, one-on-one -on -one Special Needs Instructional Assistant, Miranda Howard, Columbia, one-on-one -on -one Special Needs Instructional Assistant, Bryce Roberts, Middle Instructional Assistant, we have a reassignment of Sabrina Prater from RHS Cafe to Columbia Instructional Assistant in charge of temporary classroom safety. Kayla Sheets from RHS Instructional Assistant, intense needs to middle instructional assistant. We have the resignations 
of Christy Brooks, Riddle Instructional System and Bus Aid, Cindy Hart, RHS Building Tech, effective August 10th, 2016, Nicole Evans, RHS Integrated Chemistry Physics Teacher, Tracy Hart, Middle Instructional Assistant, Special Needs, and that's effective August 26th of 2016, and uh, Shelby Seisinger, the RHS Diving Coach. Then we have the High School Middle School Extracurricular Recommendations, which is a lengthy list. And uh, has everybody had an opportunity to go through all the extracurricular uh, recommendations? And I appreciate Greg's work on that. Greg's trying to, to, to get his entire coaching staff together so that he's having conversations with them, setting expectations and guidelines, and trying to get those laid out for all, all of our seasons. So what you're seeing there are a uh, culmination of many conversations he's been having with the athletic coaches and uh, supervisors for fall, winter, and the spring seasons. I have a question about the ECA assignments. I know that we discussed this a little bit last year and looked back over to see what was really needed. Some of them, uh, I would, like, especially in departments that have one teacher per department, is there something that they go beyond that that's why there's an extra stipend for that? And then do you want to share how that works, especially at the high school with textbook adoption? And sure. The um, yeah, whenever we do a textbook adoption, they're in charge of that. A lot of these, um, even if there's just like one, our teacher at the high school, when we do department meetings, they'll do department meetings throughout the district. So all of our teachers are all the teachers throughout the district. Uh, we need to go over their curriculum and make sure that they're aligned. Two, two people uh, together. From K-12. These uh, coaching uh, pay levels are the same as last year. They're, they are. They're set by the ECA, right? Correct. Okay. And right. they were last year. We did open that up. We did uh, try to clean up as best we could the entire ECA schedule, and we readjusted that and realigned that at that point in time. But we are not proposing any changes at all for this. Okay. Is there a reason for that? I appreciate, by the way, Mr. Martz's overview of the whole year. In doing so, it makes it easy to compare to. It's, there are some programs that have substantially more money than other programs. And I know he's just new in this position, but do we I, have reasons for that? I know all of our coaches work hard, and none of them are getting rich off of this. I don't mean to say, pretend like that's what I'm saying, but can be used on some of them. It's pretty common across the board in places. I mean, uh, it's. I would say we're, we're probably in line with a lot of others with what we pay and how many positions we pay. Is Do we evaluate it all based on years of experience? I noticed our first year football coach is making the same as our you know, state champion basketball girls coach. It's pretty standard to have your, those three positions the same. That's the line with you. Uh, uh, Jennifer, I wince a little bit because yeah. swimming is a revenue sport. You pay lots of kids. It's real coaching, and it's about half. half and the she's in charge of 30, 40 kids in the program. I, yeah. I don't know uh, the basketball numbers, especially for surprising. It means football. Well, I wish it were more equitable. I'm yeah. not sure how to get there or how many toes that would step on or people that would offend. But yeah. I mean, we, we're paying a K-1-2 basketball coordinator $900 a year. And it's not about that specific person doing the position, but the position itself, does, does that rise to $900 a year when we have a lot of elementary and middle school teachers that are doing extra things too that are not being paid extra on there? And we don't pay youth football or youth baseball. We don't play soccer. We don't pay, we don't pay for oils. I just, yeah. I, I'm not saying I won't vote to approve it this time, but I think there's still work that needs to be done to realign things. And I just mentioned slowly, but there are other. Oh, exactly. The, the, and I'm not saying we should necessarily base it on the popularity of the sport, but 
like Mr. Marcy said, that's, that's typical, that's what's been done, but just because it's been done like that for years, you know, trends change. We have a lot, we have a, we have a different proportion of kids in different sports. Than and I see your point, but I also concur with Mr. Marks on some of the things that you don't see behind the scenes too. So that's something we could talk about in a study session or something like that. Right, that's not something to re, right. re yeah. do tonight, but that was something, because he done a nice job of laying it out over the whole year, <laughs> that was easy to see. Um, and then a quick question on our chemistry and physics teacher, is the new hire a full-time position? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a change then from the position before. Does the uh, revenue of sports bring in affect salaries? I mean, like football, basketball, probably your two main revenue. I mean, what you have in front of you is basically standard salaries across the state. Yeah, probably less than one percent of the total budget. I mean, all the salaries are balanced and discussable between your teachers association, basically. Ken Franklin, in defense of Mr. Martz, if you were to look at surrounding school districts, I know a couple football coaches make a lot more money, as well as some of the other programs as well, so really we're getting kind of a bargain, because if you look at the cast in the Valley and the Eastern Plaska when they advertise the paper, kind of like, boy, I know I do it for free, but some of those people aren't doing it for very much either, so. Right. Well, and to go back to, I don't think any of our coaches are doing it. Right, right, I know you didn't right. right. And they're per hour right. salary, any of them. About 37 cents about. before taxes. <laughs> Used to be, anyway. It's like being yes. on the school board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes it all worth yeah. yes, my, my comment, and I'm sure yours too, is nothing about our new athletic director. No. It's just oh, no. an assistant that, that's in place. Exactly. Right. We can look at it. Jan, I have a question. Um, the health and PE area coordinator is the, yeah. the woman Katie. stepping. Yes, yeah, the woman stepping into that to Katie's position to cover Katie's position. Is she going to then do that work? Uh, you know what? I'll have to call up for that because I believe I said this to work. Okay. Uh, that <clears throat> Okay, you have a question? I need a motion to approve the personnel report. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. Second? Second. Second by Don. Here in discussion. In favor? Okay, motion carried 7 0. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate your work. Thank you. Sounds like there's some work ahead of us to look through and consider. <laughs> All right, we're moving to uh, job description approval of our director of facilities. As Terry is, is uh, wrapping stuff up, one of the conversations we've had, and, and Jim Swank has been very open and honest about, um, he has been with Rochester Schools for years, and he has a wealth of information that we want to make sure that we are tapping into while he is still here and under contract. He has also shared that retirement is in his future. It's not in the near future, but in the next few years, he wants to strongly consider that. Um, he has also shared that he feels overwhelmed and, and just uh, feels like his being trained on all of the new systems and the technology and the, and the computers that are gonna drive these new HVAC systems is something that to spend money and training time with him is not going to prove uh, to be um, fiscally responsible moving forward in the years to come. So with that in mind, Terry has, as well as Jim Swank, have looked over the job description Ted has as well, and I want to thank him um, to, to look at starting that transition process as the new system is going in. We want to make sure that somebody understands it from the ground up while at the same time working side by side with Jim, who has years and years and wealth of experience. We, with some of the money and savings on bids and, and those types of things, we would propose that we would pay this director of facilities out of the bond money for the next two to three years as, as we're putting these systems into place as Jim and his family are contemplating that retirement and when it's right for him and for his family and, and begin that process of, of moving in that direction. So we want to be clear because we've been very sensitive and Mrs. Vance, you've been very sensitive in not wanting to add any positions when there have been other programming, important programming that has been cut. That this is not adding 
a new position per se into the general fund. This is a transition piece and right now will be paid out exactly. of that money. It would be paid bond. out of the bond money. Jim has been very supportive of it. About the time that he is ready to retire, this person should be on board, our system should be in place, and then this person would absorb that pay slot where, where Jim's normally would fall. You're absolutely correct. That person can hit the ground running. Then exactly. And with the new facilities and, and the technology, we need somebody that's going to be ready as soon as the systems are ready. Okay. And our question. When do you propose to advertise for this position, assuming, of course, it's accepted? It's accepted. I'd like to start on that right away because the systems are going to start going in, and it's important that they understand all components of it. Um, does the new position encompass what Jim does now and then add them to it? I, I would say, and Terry, you may have to help me a little bit. I, I think that Jim spends so much of his time trying to troubleshoot these systems, trying to keep them up and running, trying to locate parts, all of those types of things that a tremendous amount of his time is spent on something that's fruitless in the end. And I'm hoping that with the new system, if it's running appropriately and that person knows that system, they will be able to, to do some of those jobs that, that need to be done, those checkpoints that, you know, we've talked about getting up on the roofs and checking the drains and maintenance and, and maintaining the records and the documents that, that in the end it's going to be a trade in time and, and uh, duties, if that makes Maybe sense. while they're working together. I'm sorry, while they're working together? Um, this position, when it's all transferred, when it's all Jim retires, mm -hmm. this position is going to do what Jim does now Correct. and more? Or is it just what Jim does now? Is Jim trying to do all this now? Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that it'll be the 21st century, Jim. <laughs> you know, it'll spend a whole lot more time on computers, less time on more, right. but, it'll okay. be, That's but it will be the, the person in charge of building maintenance, build, uh, uh, the custodial crew, the custodial maintenance crew, staff, the, whole, the ordering the of supplies. And the technology pieces across the campus. So Jim Swing 2.0. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there will be work that he does, that the new person doesn't do, that Jim does do now, somebody else is going to have to do it. Because it's no, not we're hoping that it's not going to exist. By fixing <laughs> the systems, the, the, then Jim, on the, this person yeah, should have to talked about it lower. You know, <laughs> just it's be, I Jim was the more. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, an easy analogy is if you think of your 1960s and 72 really, uh, basically look at a car mechanic that worked on those cars and then think about one that needs to work on a car today. That's the di biggest difference is technology is the new guy's going to have to understand the technology behind it, but he shouldn't have to. If you've spent an hour with Jim, he's, he's with you for five minutes and the rest of the time he's running in circles on the radio, gotta go fix this, gotta run and see what's going on. Instead, the guy should be able to pull out his phone and say, oh, this is where we're starting. <laughs> and, and, to be able to, and to be able to pull up information instantaneously. You know, it's just two different worlds and we hope to uh, make everything more efficient. But Don, there are still responsibilities. Jim's responsible for all, ordering all of the supplies. This person would be would learn that process for ordering and, and maintaining supplies. Okay. He's responsible for all the personnel for maintenance across the district. So that person would learn well, that system and interview and, and be responsible. Take over for that. all that mm -hmm. So, so the one person management team will end up being a one person management team. It won't be a manager and an assistant manager. I think that's maybe for your question. some of the time savings will be on new equipment that you don't have to run around finding parts for. Well, just, he's putting out fires every minute. With Ruby and hotness, it's just endless for him. And, and I, because I, I set meetings with him all the time and I get him for five minutes and he's gotta run because he's been on fire. So, just inefficient. It's, it's due to age of buildings and technology is being used. Okay. All right, we'll need a motion to approve the, the job description. Director of Facilities. So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. I'll second. And second by Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries 7-0.
So the job description is Gem Point 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> And I think oh. if we posted that in the community, they'd understand what we were saying. <laughs> okay, next item, approval Michael Rohrer's contract. Michael and I had an opportunity to speak, uh, I believe it was earlier this week, and I am proposing that his contract, um, before it was a 260-day contract, we are looking at a 230-day contract for Michael. We talked about what that calendar might look like for him. Uh, just again, a change in how we're running busing routes, um, expectations, the the age of buses, those types of things, and doing some research, I do believe it's a job that can be done with those 230 days within that time frame. And and he was comfortable after we sat down and spoke about uh, attempting that for one year and looking at the calendar and how he plans and schedules those <coughs> those events around those 230 days. Okay. Any questions? So, I I'm sorry, I don't have it pulled up right now. Is it just a one-year contract then? It is a one-year okay. contract. I missed that detail. Thank you. Okay. Uh, need a motion to approve uh, Michael Lohr's contract. So moved. Okay. A motion by Sandy. I second that. And a second by Steve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay. Mr. Carey, seven zero. Uh, next item, approval of Dan McCarthy's contract. Dan and I also had an opportunity to sit down today and talk about um, contract, and he just finished out his first year of being the technology coordinator and, and working on instruction and everything, and I think that we build a plan moving forward to provide teachers with that technology support and kind of revolutionize how, how that works for the teachers and for technology, and would propose a two-year contract the first year uh, this year, um, the salary being $64,498. Any questions? Is that the same amount of days as before? It's the same amount of days and the same pay as before. And it would be a two-year contract. And we spoke about meeting every other week and, and working with building level principals and, and what that might look like, the process for rolling out new technology and innovation for teachers. And I think we're coming up with a pretty good plan. Motion approved. So moved. Red. I second that. And I second by Steve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Motion carried. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. All right, moving on to other business, superintendent business. Just very quickly, um, I've sent out information about the fall conference for the school board and I've heard back, I know that Jimmy and Sandy do plan to attend and Don was not able to, but if the rest of you could let us know so that we can go ahead and make those reservations. No? Okay. Okay, all right, we'll go ahead and make those then. And then uh, just a reminder to the community and with Greg here, we're working on tailgating this Friday night and we want to get as many out here, first of all, just to socialize and fellowship as a district and then support the Zebra football team while at the same time being here for halftime for the, the presentation of the award um, with Christina Hughes and John Alley and everybody back on Friday evening. So inviting the public uh, to that forum and to come and tailgate with us. We're going to start it at 6 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Board, have any questions, comments? Anybody from the audience? Okay, if there's no objection, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks for coming.